Hi, my name is LaQuincy Reed, and I'm here with Carrie Shadid. Shadid? Shadid. Shadid, Shadid yeah. <laughs> uh, she's a poet, artist, maker, and a former or a past artist in residence here at the Skirvin. So, Carrie, just go ahead and kind of introduce yourself a little bit better than I did. Oh, no, that was great. Thank you. Um, yes, I'm Carrie Shadid. I uh, actually work as a freelance writer, and um, while I was doing that, I had taken a class when I was doing my master's at New York University on fiction writing, and I had never, uh, aside from when I go back and look at what I created as a child, I mean, I definitely did do a lot of creative making. We had great art teachers, um, Annette Pate, uh, and then Lori Keller was starting at Swan. I did a lot of creative writing with that. But I never, I, th it, going into my career, I was much more focused on academic writing, um, the humanities, and I had come back and was writing for some magazines, uh, doing some other freelance copywriting, and I just started writing poetry. Um, I think kind of to process a transition to my life. I feel like that's a little cliche, but a lot of people do come to poetry, I think, when they're dealing with um, times of transition. Mm -hmm. And so through that, I, I actually discovered I really loved writing poetry. Um, and then I got involved with um, Artist Inc., which is an organization for uh, helping artists create professional aspects to their career. Uh, and through that, I met a lot of visual artists and got more involved with the arts community here in OKC. Um, actually started doing visual art myself. My impetus really was, this is an amazing community of visual artists. How can I be a part of this group? Mm -hmm. uh, and I had taken Ebru, which is Turkish water marbling, um, at Raindrop Turkish Cultural Center here with some of my friends I had studied abroad in France with. So I've always loved other cultures. Mm -hmm. Um, I my academic past was in international relations, uh, spending time um, studying other cultures, and so I thought, well, I know how to do one artistic thing <laughs> that not everyone is doing, uh, which is water marbling, and so I started actually creating visual art while I was here mm -hmm. as the artist in residence. So I was selected to be an artist in residence at the Skirvin for my poetry stand, mm -hmm. where I have people write spont or give me a word and then I write spontaneous poems for them based on that word or a phrase. Uh, and that actually grew out of a performance piece that I did for Ovax Momentum. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, you, again, like I, I wanna be involved with this amazing Oklahoma City arts community, what could I do? Uh, well, I. I've started doing poetry, maybe I could turn it into a performance art piece. And when I did that momentum piece, I had no idea if I could do it, honestly. Yeah. I thought, I thought I'll try this concept. Um, and then I practice, you know, I look up a word in the dictionary and practice. I thought, okay, sure, I can do this for five hours or however long <laughs> it was, over two days. I think it was like, I think it probably, it was maybe like three hours each day over two days, maybe even longer. Mm -hmm. And, um, it was just so cool. I fell in love with it. Um, I had a long line. That's probably the most stressful part of when I would do poetry stand at events, the line. Really? You know, because you're wanting to have this um, sometimes really deep, if brief, connection over poetry. Uh, and then you're thinking, oh, but I got to get to everyone. Um, and so poetry stand has been amazing. I... I was thinking about this in preparation to come over and what I might want to say about Poetry Stand. And it's really transitioned. I don't get to do it as much mm -hmm. post-pandemic. Yeah. Uh, I did get an opportunity recently, and it's like riding a bike, I guess. You know, again, I went into it thinking, can I still do this? Mm -hmm. I haven't done this in like a year and a half. And it was just so amazing. And I think something that for me is very special about it we, you know, have brief interactions with people we don't know yeah. all through our day and yeah. our lives, right? But when it's over art, I think it's just, it 
brings us into the moment. It really humanizes those relationships. I think, you know, it's it's over something that we just know is significant. Mm -hmm. What, However the poem turns out, the fact that you're having this relationship of someone asking you to just give them a word and then, and sometimes it's it's almost magical. Like I, I think, well, I am a pretty intuitive person, so maybe that ties in. But you know, just based on a word, I've had people have really amazing reactions to what I hand them. Like, oh my gosh, I this is actually something that I've been going through and mm -hmm. thinking about, and it's it's sometimes tangential to the word they gave me. Uh, so it there is a magic, I think, to human connection through art. Okay, that's so been really cool. And then I also do freelance writing. And yeah, that was a long introduction <laughs> to myself, but I was no, you're fine. You're fine. So. Uh, talking about your uh, your poems, your, po mm -hmm. your, your poetry stand-up, is that how you phrase it? Yeah, poetry, poetry stand-up. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's what you originally came in here to do, correct? Yes. And then you were taking the, the marbling, and then did you decide when you got here to marry the two, or was that uh, yeah. beforehand? When, how did the marrying of the marbling and the, right. the poetry come about? I so... That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure I remember exactly how that started. I had, had already been doing some marbling before I came into the space, and I think it was just so ripe um, to create art in. Mm -hmm. As you know, like it's a gorgeous space. You have tons yeah. of room. Um, I had, I was always open for a poetry scene, so anyone could walk in, but as you know, there's plenty of downtime. Yeah. Um, and I also wanted a a way to draw people into the space yeah. in another aspect. So I started doing marbling workshops, which was very fun. Yeah. I Another thing that I love getting to teach marbling workshops because people, again, think it's magic. The magic element seems yeah. to keep tying in. But with marbling, it really has that feel because um, you're floating paint on water and you make these neat designs and then you just put your paper in and, and it transfers. I think that moment of transfer because it turns out more vibrant to yeah. on the paper than even looks in the water. And you're like, how's it sticking to the paper? Yeah. How did I drop this? And it didn't get mixed up and I got to do all these neat patterns. And um, so that was very fun. And, and of course, I probably knew right away when I came in that I wanted to create art for the walls. Yeah. Because that's kind of a key component of this space. Um, and when I first started, I would say I did do a lot more, like you said, marrying the poetry and marbling, where I was actually doing art that had um, poetry in it. Mm -hmm. Either I was pa marbling panels and painting words on it, or I was doing a lot of custom poetry art yeah. for people, which was really neat. I actually haven't done that in a long time and really enjoyed it. So I'd talk to maybe you know, someone wanted to give this piece to their significant other for their birthday, so I'd find out a little bit and then write a poem celebrating yeah. that person and and then um, marble around it. So that, that, that was a fun thing to do. Uh, my visual art has definitely changed since I was here, you mm -hmm. know, a number of years ago. I still do marbling, but as far as I now really use the papers to often collage animal scenes or mm. to create abstract art. Um, we'll insert some pictures of that in here yeah. later. <laughs> Send them on by. So, yes. And uh, when I first started, you know, I was using it more as maybe a frame or mar uh, the piece we'll see was marbling yeah. directly onto a panel, which I really don't do very much anymore. But what was cool about that stage, whereas marbling directly onto wood panels, um, which kind of turned into, I was a spotlight artist for a moment mm -hmm. for Momentum Tulsa, um, where I did a similar part project. And part of that was the fact that typically when you marble, um, you have paper and, and you're very careful to put it down just right to not trap any bubbles. But when you have a, you know, non-flexible wood panel, yeah. you don't have the option of putting it down yeah. gently. And so a lot of times you do get bubbles. And something that I was embracing, you know, wholeheartedly, both in my poetry and art at the time, and mm -hmm. probably still do, although I maybe emphasize, emphasize it a little less, um, 
is, you know, embracing the unknown and lots of control um, and happy accidents or yeah, uh, even unhappy, you know, just that you can't control every aspect of this art making process, which I think is very true with marbling. Um, so that was a cool way form could follow function and I could get some of that philosophy in there. Yeah. <laughs> through how I was doing it. So we talked about your, your marbling, we talked about your poetry. I want to talk about your bookmaking as well because uh, I saw that you kind of incorporate the marbling, bookmaking, and the poetry into one piece. So are these books that you make, and obviously they're handmade, obviously, yeah. are they unique works of art or are you taking poems and then making uh, uh, several different books using the same poems or is it just a unique one of a kind book. Tell me how that process yeah. all works. Um, so mainly I was hand making books of my poetry. So there yeah. was a set set of poems that I had written um, and then was essentially self publishing this book as a unique piece each time because I would use a different marble paper and yeah. hand bind them. Uh, and that was really cool. There, they've since gone out of print no, okay. <laughs> if, if something self-published that I could make it anytime yeah. can be said to be out of print uh, but and sometimes I would do like my custom poetry artwork uh, I have done mm -hmm. individual poems like that for people as well and I think again that was really cool because it was something handmade I still make marbled note cards mm -hmm. um, and sell at places like Paseo Arts Association, DNA Galleries. Yeah. Uh, and I I like that idea of something handmade. Um, I've always been a fan of craft and, and functional art. Mm -hmm. You know, I love visual art, but I get a lot of joy just personally out of, you know, filling my day and space with things that are significant and beautiful. Mm -hmm. You know, I really try to find things made by makers, whatever yeah. it is I might be using, like my wooden spoons that I cook with, you know? Yeah. And and so I like participating in that realm as well as kind of more of a craft person making note cards or in journals yeah. I did as well. Um, because I think, you know, why not? Again, there's a added human connection where we might otherwise just be buying something printed mm -hmm. in the factory and yeah. shipped off and at whatever store where you don't know someone. These are amazing local shops run by people in the arts community. Um, so there's that component. And then hopefully they're just beautiful and give people a little bit of joy yeah. when you when you get them. Yeah, something unique and personal yeah. is, uh, is something that I've learned doing my own art that a lot of collectors appreciate. And, uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't really think about it from their perspective because I'm just focused on making the art. Right. But then when you get to talk to them, part of it is they want to have something that's unique and they want to have a story to tell and they want to be able to pass it on to their kids. And I've actually had people say, uh, I didn't buy it until I talked to my kids because when I, you know, eventually pass, I want them to have something that they that they want to keep them exactly. <laughs> in, in the family. And that's, that's why they bought it. And I, I was like, I hadn't. I hadn't thought about that because oh, I'm just wow. I'm just making it and I'm that just is really so that unique. was kind of a different perspective because like I said we're always I on the that. yeah 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 that's really cool I uh, do you have art um, on occasion purchased for people's children mainly because I make playful animal yeah. art that I, as an adult I like but, yeah. <laughs> but it's typically seen as maybe more appropriate for yeah um, children's rooms and whatnot but I. I think that's another philosophy that guides the type of art I do, which is typically pretty vibrant. Mm -hmm. As I mentioned, I do some abstract, but a lot of times incorporating, as I call it, adorable animal, adorable animal art. So I thought, uh, I guess taking a step back to the career path I was on um, related to international relations, mm -hmm. uh, I was doing a Fulbright at McGill University in yeah. Montreal. Um, studying UN roles, UN's role in Canada peacekeeping. Uh, sorry, I mixed that up. Canada's <laughs> role. <laughs> See, it's Canada's mm. role in UN peacekeeping. Yeah. Um, and I had, you know, studied genocide through my undergrad a lot. And I always 
wanted to have a positive influence on the world. Mm-hmm. And I think wherever along the line, that idea of, of bettering the world was through like international relations, help prevent mm-hmm. or address conflict. And then I thought, um, I was studying a lot of Buddhism, it kind of ties into this, uh, but really it was a transition and it kind of transition away from sort of an intellectual academic way of thinking to kind of a wisdom interpersonal way. Mm-hmm. And I thought um, more and more because there's so many unintended consequences when you get involved in international relations. Uh, there's so many things you can't do, like studying yeah. the UN, you know, that it, they, anyway, that's yeah. a whole other one we can get at. I love the UN, but they have a lot of things that they just can't do. Yeah. Um, and I thought, okay, if we all focused on creating positive interactions in our daily life, if we created environments in which we could share joy with people, you know, or we created the environments in which we felt happy and that happiness infused out, you know, it's, it's not selfish to, to try to create a positive sense in yourself because yeah. it spreads, you yeah. know, I, I think that's a really good way to impact the world. So to go back to what I've seen, the type of art I make, I think what type of art, if I saw this every morning, you know, would it maybe brighten my day a little yeah. bit? And could that have a ripple effect? If yeah. I wake up and see these, you know, sweet animals that make me think about, like, oh, compassion, kindness, adorableness, bright colors that lift the spirit. Um, is that a way I can, ha- you know, have yeah. a positive impact on the world? Maybe. Yeah. So uh, what's really interesting is the very first time we actually met each other mm-hmm. was at my brother's wedding. And Elizabeth is your cousin, correct? Chris's cousin, my boyfriend's cousin. Okay, yeah. yeah. So it's the very first time I met you, and I don't think I've ever talked to you when you're not smiling and, and happy. So I can get that that sense that that's all you want to do is, you know, just provide, you know, that little bit of joy and happiness in the world. So, uh, yeah, really, that's that's really great, and it's, it's rare to find people that just exude that, like, 24-7. I'm, I'm not sure if it's exhausting for you. It'd be exhausting for me. <laughs> Thank you. That's good you to say. Um, I don't. I don't know if it's exhausting, but that actually goes back to again, like in school, it used to really bother me. Alice's Adventures in Wonderland yeah. is one of my favorite, you know, books. For instance, um, and like the poems of uh, Russell Edson, which are really very pay- playful. And not that these aren't well respected car- people. Lewis Carroll is pretty well respected, yeah. but I always felt like joyful art. Mm-hmm. Again, going back to jo- my love for Jojo yeah. Rabbit, we were just talking yeah. about like person's very sad. Joyful art often gets discounted, mm-hmm. I think, because of its joy, and it's and I don't want to do the reverse and say like, you know, understanding human suffering obviously mm-hmm. is very important. It's yeah. an important part of being alive. It's not the only thing that connects yeah. us. A lot of times you hear people say like, oh, but we all suffer. We all also have moments of joy, you yeah. know, and. And what there's, my dad always says, he's a retired psychologist Mm -hmm. saying, you know, what fires together, wires together, like in the neurons. What if as a world, we focused on the the joy that connects us a bit more, you know, would that again, like start to shift some things? Yeah, that's, Mm -hmm. that's a really tough thing to do because my mind, I always think about (laughs) the worst case scenarios. And I, I, I know a lot of people that's, those are the things that occupy a lot of your, your space in your head and maybe it, it, it would well it would definitely do a lot of us a lot of good if we focused a little bit more on the yeah. things that are actually making us happy and I, I i really appreciate that that's that's what your focus is because i mean you can make heavy serious art and everybody can kind of do that when you know, we can all understand that but making art that's a little bit more playful and joyful you know that's just as important and in some ways, it's a little bit harder because, you know, there's that balancing act of actually making something that's joyful and playful and happy. It also has to be good, too. Yeah. So yeah. I appreciate that. Oh, Thank you. one more question, and yes. then we're going to go up and we're going to visit your work. Uh, what have you learned and what have you been up to since your time here at the Skirvin? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's a broad one. Um, what have I learned? Well, specifically, what have you learned from your time here at the Skirvin? Yeah, I think uh, 
I mean, people are interesting. I, yeah. I already do that, but I that's this is such a unique environment in which, um, again, going back to being a part of the arts community, a lot of times our day to day interactions are sort of structured around the groups of people we spend time with, mm-hmm. right? You know, if I go if I go to OVAX Moment or Twelve yeah. by Twelve, there's a group of people that generally come to that same event, and even if you've met someone you've never seen, yeah. a lot of times it's uh, similar interests. This experience was very cool because, um, you know, who walks in your door isn't edited. Yeah. Uh, and it, I really had, I think, surprising interactions. Yeah. Like, a lot more surprising interactions, maybe, than I anticipated. Um, so that is something that I took away for sure, from this experience, uh, I don't know. People are just so wonderful. I, I just, I kind of, I love like all of those different personality differences, and um, and then since then, uh, so I've been, I spend most of my time doing freelance writing, and mm-hmm. I, I take joy whenever I can do poetry still. Yeah. Um, but it's interesting, I. Even just my most recent freelance writing gig um, with that I'm doing now, you know, I have several clients, but one of them is Salesforce.org. And when we first started talking, I said, you know, I do poetry, and they thought that was so cool. And I love that I've I feel very privileged to have had a career in writing where I get to do lots of different types of writing that actually really support each other. Yeah. So in brand writing or you know creating web copy um again i think my love of talking to people plays in so well there because you're even you know when you're working on a brand you're essentially interviewing the client and um and that intuitive thing that i gained from poetry scene again ties into that because you're trying to find out what is essential to them what brings them joy yeah the brand really is again like we're going to bring joy to the world through this positive, it's, you know, there's the idea of like a guiding brand. Like this is nobody wants a Yeah, nobody wants a product that's going to make you feel crappy. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Like, how is this going to benefit you? Yeah. Um, And bring bring you a little joy. Uh, Yeah, so, and then just, I'm so thankful to still get to have this tie to this place. And like, to to you, of course, we met uh, outside, but I, I don't think I've missed a single Scriven Artist in Resident reception since I left. Like, I love just getting to maintain those connections and see what is happening yeah. with the next artist. And it's so cool to see how diverse the art is. I mean, the Quincy's work is, is phenomenal. <laughs> like, it's spectacular. Well, um, thank you. So cool. And... I'm so glad to get to have these conversations, to get to have this conversation with you. Well, so I'm very neat. I'm really glad that you got a chance to visit with me, and I'm trying to get a hold of the other ones. So if you can get me their contact information, I'd like to do everybody, especially <laughs> since I'm the tenth one. And then it could be like we have all of them here, and that that'd be something that would be kind of cool, I think. Yes. So thank you, Paseo <laughs> and Skirvin. Before <laughs> we like, how cool ten? Yeah. This is a really neat program. Yeah, it's great. Mm -hmm. So you ready to go visit your artwork? Yeah. All right, we'll go ahead and take everything down and we'll go visit that. Sounds Sounds good? good. All right. So we're here with your piece. Um, Why don't you just go ahead and kind of (laughs) introduce it and talk about the process that you that you went through and uh, with it. I'll ask you a couple more questions. Sure, sure. And well, it's called Meandering Leads to the Target. As I mentioned, this is a piece that I made while I was here, so it was definitely earlier in my artistic creation. Um, It's marbled on a panel, so as I was saying, you get some little imperfections. I don't know if you can see some of these, Uh, but actually this one turned out quite vibrant. Again, the magic. (laughs) And, and, you know, it has the bright colors. Honestly, there's not... um, <laughs> Some of my pieces certainly have a lot more meaning behind them, um, but yeah, I definitely enjoyed making it. And 
I was happy that it turned out this well on a wood panel because some of them do not always. Um, also, not the question you asked, but I am wearing my Jennifer Woods earrings, one of the other artists in former artists in residence. Yeah, so she's hanging up over there. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully we'll get a hold of her. <laughs> so shout out to the AIR community. All right. So meandering leads to the target. That's kind of a poetic name. Yeah. Any particular reason? No. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I do love naming my abstract pieces, and a lot of times it's just uh, a fun, I mean, do you see, right? I don't, maybe it's an opportunity. Well. Do you see it, the title in the? Well, when you said, when you give the backstory, mm -hmm. meandering leads to the target, it sounded like you were experimenting and just kind of That's finding your way. Yeah. And then you eventually found a way to make the. Yeah. the project work, make the target work. Exactly. So that's kind of what I yes. was reading yes, into yes, it. Yes, I think that's <laughs> totally true. You know, I had, um, I remember hearing a long time ago someone asking one of the Beatles about a lyric and the meaning, they're like, oh, I don't know. Um, but it did, ha but, but again, it did have this, this depth of meaning. And I think that's part of art, right? Yeah. Like sometimes it just, comes out of you slightly subconsciously or because you're exactly right and and thinking about that too I think it was fitting to yeah exactly the stage in life I was um, at at the time uh, just in general too, kind of try trying new things yeah. in a bigger sense and and meandering but having uh, these great moments Target, you know, lean to the target. Great moments of joy within the uncertainty. Okay. Kind of gets back to that, yeah. So you said, is this one of your earlier works or was it? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then towards, uh, I guess, later on, you started adding text to some of your works. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was kind of doing that at the same time, I would okay. say, while I was at the Skirvin. Um, yes, and I'll make sure to give you some examples of those okay. too. <laughs> so, so you can see some... Some of the other, I did an Alice in Wonderland series, having mm -hmm. mentioned my love of Alice, uh, with, those were fun because those did have some kind of um, little quips or aphorisms that, that did say something about my philosophy of life. Like one of the ones, the one I still have um, is Alice saying, uh, a life without curiosity is a grim affair, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? And so tying into Alice, but also a great bigger um, philosophy of life issue. So I was going to ask, um, you mentioned Alice in Wonderland, you mentioned some of the stories and your poetry, and I was going to ask, is there a particular uh, jumping off point or starting point that, in, in, that, in, that informs what kind of text you're going to include? Because a lot of them are just one or two words. Um, is there... How's the genesis of that? Yeah, yeah. Stuff? So really, um, the way I go, this kind of goes to how I was writing poetry at the yeah. time, and and really kind of still do. Uh, so one of the I was going to make a whole series, and while I was here, uh, called the Run On series, like that was just run on sentences, but they were kind of just flowing, um, and it really is like a stream of consciousness. Kind of, it. I would say I don't heavily plan out what I create in art, which is weird because most people who know me will attest that I heavily plan out everything, mm -hmm. like everything. So I'm thinking that art became a, and poetry became a really good release where I didn't have to. Poetry stand for that matter too. Yeah. There's no editing, yeah. you know. And typically I just start writing when someone give me, gives me a word. Same with the type of text I use in my art. Um, and it's kind of interesting that something I have enjoyed so much and that really works pretty well. I go about the exact opposite of the way I go about most of my everyday life. Well, Which I think a lot of, I think a lot of artists are kind of like that. Or I, there's an element to that. I think so. I think there is. Yeah. So a lot of artists do compartmentalize how they, they handle things, mm -hmm. especially within their artwork. Um, me, uh, I, you say stream of consciousness is kind of how I am. When I research things, like I have no idea where I find the idea, but somehow I get down a rabbit hole and 
I get yeah. interested in things and, and that's kind of how I go about things. So that's cool. I don't know, maybe a lot of, that's maybe that's how a lot of artists kind of yeah. chase things. But yeah. So that's neat. Yeah. And I, I, so I wouldn't necessarily set out to research anything, but I think that's probably where because um, I have a very liberal arts background, mm -hmm. like uh, my undergrad is letters and poli sci, and my grad work is in the humanities and social thought. So I think there's just a lot of stuff yeah. <laughs> stuck in here, and sometimes it'll just pop out, like it'll just pop out, yeah. um, or or I'll see something yeah. going about. So I I really don't pre-plan or even research much. I really want to thank you for your time and you know just Thanks. visiting with me and getting to know you a little bit better and uh hopefully we'll get to know each other a little bit more, a little bit better throughout the years and everything and we'll come visit the next artist in residence down here absolutely thank you so much for having me thank you so good to get to talk to you all i love getting to talk about my art and poetry and um yeah this has just been really fun all thank right. you so much thank you